Well, you take our strategic objectives. Number one is horizontality. So we, th we think we should be one firm, but it's a question about how long that takes us to do it. If you slam things together, it's a bit like if you plonk down large amounts of money for businesses, it's, it, it tends to be go against you. Uh, and it's a question of timing. I, I don't think the direction is controversial, having one united firm. The, what is controversial, the speed at which you do it. I think it has to be done gradually, particularly given the strength of the brand. So one thing that we're seeing is around horizontality, as we call it. The second is around fast growth markets, which continues to be the future. The next billion consumers are not going to come from US and Western Europe. It's going to come from Asia, Latin America, Africa, Middle East and Central and Eastern Europe. So fast growth markets, digital, we're already almost 40% of our business, probably will be 45, 50% in pretty short order. And then lastly, data, which is 25% of our business, which is roughly where it should be. Now, uh, of our 20, $21 billion of revenue this year, about six billion is coming from media, and about five billion, a little bit more, is coming from data. It's half the company, uh, and we deliberately renamed um, uh, consumer insight and market research. We named it data investment management, and tried to bring, or trying to bring, media investment management, which is media planning and buying, and data investment management closer and closer together. It's half the company. It should be very, very much more united. I think you know, we've had some successes in terms of pitches, etc. We've had some failures. And where we've failed uh, often is to integrate our offer, to lock it together much and leverage the data that we have. So when we renamed Kantar, uh, Data Investment Management, not we didn't rename Kantar, but we called it Data Investment Management, what we were getting over was the similarity between media and data and the need to link them together. I mean, we're unique amongst our, the top six holding companies in having a data business which is a first party data business, not a third party data business, and a data business where we're producing each year $5 billion worth plus worth of data uh, and research, which is of value. Uh, obviously, there are some restrictions on what we can do in terms of confidentiality, but the knowledge that we're building, uh, it's very, very important. And given the restrictions on the use of data that Google and Facebook and Amazon and Apple and others put on their uh, dissemination of their own data, that data is becoming more and more important. And if we can combine that with other data sets, whether they be from media owners, whether they be from clients, uh, particularly as clients want to go direct to consumer, you see Unilever by Dollar Shave Club, that's not really, I think, about competing with Gillette. It's really about a, a channel of engagement and a channel of dis distribution. 30% uh, of the Dollar Shave Club's uh, members are women. Uh, so there's clearly opportunities for Unilever to go direct to consumer and capitalize on the changes that have been brought about by the internet. And with this incredibly data-rich environment and these yeah. tools that you have, what about the creative piece? And we were in Cannes and you guys did something about creative optimization, but where do the agencies and the creative process sort of fit into all of this? Well, uh, they f they f they're intrinsically part of it. I think the, the way that, that pitches go show you the way that there has been a change in thinking. The medium is to some extent determining the message. I mean, there's a big debate about whether message is more important, medium or vice versa. I, I tend to think that the medium now is driving. So what pitches, instead of having, starting with a strategist who then, from insight, develops an overall all-embracing creative idea, and then, you know, if you had time in the old days, you, you present a media plan uh, and the media buying plan. Um, instead of it, it's the other way around now. What happens is you start with uh, the data, develop consumer insight from it, then tailor the creative to the media plan that you put together. And often the medium will determine the message. I mean, it isn't, sometimes the idea will be the same across all, 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 all the media, but the executions will be very different. And so I think it's changing. In fact, media has become more and more important. I mean, there's big discussions of which is, which is more important. 
um, but it has changed very significantly over the last five to ten years and the digital revolution is making it change even faster so uh, I would say it's sort of inverted a bit in terms of uh, the process but clearly the creative and media fit together and one of the things that's happening with increasing frequency is clients are looking for integration whether they go the whole hog and integrate with one holding company or one company as we we have with say a Ford or a Colgate with uh, GTB and uh, with Red Fuse uh, is another another question because sometimes procurement departments like to maintain a balance uh, between more than one supplier between two or three or four um, but what you are seeing in a low growth world which will continue in 2017 relatively little inflation although that might change very little pricing power and the role of focus on costs and therefore procurement and finance is very strong.